Welcome back to Photoshop for Photographers. The first step that we need to do before we actually start importing any images into Photoshop or Adobe Camera Raw is set up Photoshop. And what that means is we're gonna come in here and change our color settings. So we're gonna come up here and go to edit and then go down to color settings. Now I already have mine pre-set up. This is what I work in. So my RGB color is Adobe 1998. You could either use Adobe, some people might use sRGB, and some people might use Pro Photo. So those are sort of the three main ones, but I work in Adobe. I'm not gonna be working in CMYK, so I'm just leaving the default. I have switched my gamma to gray gamma 2.2, and I've changed all the color management policies from preserve embedded profiles to convert to working RGB. What this is gonna mean is if a profile comes in and it is not Adobe 98, it's automatically gonna convert it to that, and it's gonna do that for CMYK and gray. Now I have this selected as ask when opening, and I'll show you what that means. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. This is gonna set that. And I'm gonna go back into Photo Mechanic, and hopefully this image doesn't have a profile attached to it. Yes, it says right now the embedded one is sRGB. Do I want to convert this? Now the reason I have this pop up, which can be kind of annoying, is occasionally I actually don't want to convert, meaning that I've already saved the file and I've changed it to sRGB to go on the web. And in that case, I would just do that and say, hey, I don't want to change it. But most of the time I want to convert to the correct working space. And just like that, it's going to remap the color and change it into the proper Adobe space that I have set. So the next thing that we have here, and we're gonna go back over into Photo Mechanic, and I'm gonna go over here to this downloads. Now I have two raw images. So when you send a JPEG from any browser over to Photoshop, it's gonna go straight and open right into Photoshop. However, if you have a raw file, when you hit Command E as I'm doing here, it is not going to send it straight into Adobe Photoshop. All raw files in the cameras have not been processed. So an unprocessed raw photo needs to go to a raw converter. And in this case, it is Adobe Camera Raw. Now Adobe Camera Raw and the develop module for Lightroom are actually the exact same program. So what you'll notice by listening to that is Lightroom is actually not a photo editing program. It is a raw conversion program. So that develop module is for raw conversion. It's not a true editing program like Adobe Photoshop. Now, this is one of the greatest things that's happening to digital photography is this kind of raw conversion window. What happens when you take a JPEG is your camera processes all the information, meaning your color balance and everything that is associated with the photo. Now, when you take a raw photo, it's just a raw capture. It's not processing that information. Now, what that allows you to do is to set your color balance and your camera profiles and some other information after the fact. So what this program is actually doing is the processing that normally your camera would do, but the program's going to do. And what's great about the program is you have a whole lot more control over what exactly is happening. Now down here in the very bottom, you'll notice I have some settings and just like we did inside of Adobe Photoshop, we have color settings that need to be set and applied inside of ACR. Once again, I have set this to the exact same color space. Since this is the first time that a color space is gonna be assigned to an image, we wanna get it set for the correct one. And then I've changed this to 16 bits per channel. Now the reason and one of the biggest benefits for shooting raw over JPEG is the amount of data that you get. So bit depth is really important. And this, the biggest difference between JPEG and raw is right here in bit depth. A normal JPEG gets shot in eight bits. That's 256 shades of gray basically. And in 16 bits, it's around 64,000. So you can see there's a whole lot more data inside a 16 bit. Now, just to be truthful here, most cameras don't actually shoot in 16-bit. You are working in 16-bit, but most cameras only can shoot in like 10, 12, 
maybe 14 bits of color. So you're not quite getting all that information, but it's still a whole lot more than you ever would inside an 8-bit image. And then I just kind of have some of this. I put my resolution at 300, which is basically the printing resolution that I want. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, I'm going to do a full tutorial inside of Adobe Camera Raw because truthfully, this is one of the most important steps in digital photography, and you really need to know how to use it. But if you've never used it, we're just going to do a really quick, simple tutorial. I'm not going to go over any of this stuff but I will have an accompanying video or I will link a video on a full tutorial on Adobe Camera Raw. So over here we have our histogram and I'm not gonna get really into the histogram. These are our settings of how this image was photographed. And then right here we have our first item, which is the profile. Now what this is doing is kind of like a default setting of how your image should look. And a lot of digital cameras have these settings inside the camera. And when you would take a JPEG image or shoot video, you can apply one of these and they're gonna come out in a certain way. Now, Adobe Color is gonna be kind of contrasty and full of color, but not super colorful. Landscape is gonna intensify that color some more. Portrait is going to flatten your image and desaturate standard is going to do the same thing almost as portrait where it's going to flatten and desaturate and adobe vivid is going to increase your contrast and really increase your color depending on the type of image and what you want out of it i'm just going to leave adobe we'll do how about landscape i never used that and this is a landscape so we'll give that one a try the next one is white balance. Now, I do not white balance inside my camera anymore when I shoot RAW. The reason for this is because I can white balance here in Adobe Camera Raw. And inside of this, not only do I have the default settings that are on the back of my camera, I also have some sliders to further adjust it. So we can come here and usually my first step is to go to auto. Now in this case, this is unusual because auto actually made it look worse. Then I can come over here and try some of these other settings and we can see like tungsten's not gonna make it look any better. And I think we'll just go with daylight in this case. Now, if I further wanna change that, if I wanna warm this up a little or cool this down a little, depending on how I want this image to look, I can slide these sliders. 95% of the time you're gonna be using your temperature, which is your Kelvin scale. And then occasionally you might want to adjust your tint, especially if you have a facial feature or your face is magenta. Magenta is a color that you definitely wanna stay away from if you get a magenta cast in someone's face because magenta is really difficult to deal with in digital photography. The next thing that we have down here is basic, our basic exposure. Now there's a whole bunch of sliders in here. There's some that you wanna use and some that you don't wanna use. The one that you don't wanna use most of the time is auto and I will click auto and auto actually didn't do too bad of a job in this case. The issue arises is that auto tries to set a white and a black point inside your image. Black point's not a huge issue, but white point is. So we can see right up here, it looks like we have something totally blown out and something here blown out. The white point it tries to set is at 0%, meaning there's no detail, there's nothing, it's bright white. Well, you don't usually want that inside of a digital image unless you really have no data. Auto tends to kind of, you can see these are some wild swings here. Normally, you wouldn't be adjusting stuff that much. Now, when you're toning, you wanna to start off a little bit flatter, meaning you don't, you don't want all this crunch in your image it's easier to bring out shadow or highlight detail when your image is flatter versus when it's really contrasty. Because when it's contrast, you have to bring it out more to make it look realistic. So you don't usually want to start off that contrasty. Just in general, I never use auto. So we're going to go up here back to default. Actually, I like this image a whole lot better than I did the auto image. The next thing you can come down here is you have your exposure, which is just adding more exposure, less exposure. The cool thing about RAW, it's just an image capture. So you have five stops of exposure adjustment. Now, if you have to do five stops of exposure adjustment, you took a really bad photo. 
usually when you're doing exposure adjustment, it might only be, you know, plus 35, plus 50. It shouldn't be that much of an adjustment, but you do have it available. The next adjustment we have is contrast. The next adjustment we have is contrast. So you can flatten out your image or increase your contrast. Now, most people are gonna to wanna to increase the contrast because it, it adds some dynamism to your image, but we don't want that right now. Remember, we wanna tone a little bit flat. Here, we can control our highlights so we can make our highlights darker, our highlights brighter. Shadows, we can open up our shadows. Now, this is something you have to do a lot. A lot of times, you just wanna open your image up a little bit till you're gonna to tone it. Whites, I don't actually use whites a lot, but this is making your whites darker, your whites brighter. And then your blacks, so we can make our blacks flatter, and then a higher D. Now, this is gonna look good by moving it over to the left, but once again, you don't wanna start out crunching your image up that much. A lot of people, when they first start toning, wanna to make their image look amazing right away. And they take this clarity slider and they go, grab the wrong one, and they go like that. And you can see it adds this dynamic contrast and sharpness and really makes this image pop. You do not wanna do this when originally starting to tone your image, unless you're just gonna to tone it here and you're gonna be done. But we are not gonna to touch the texture, the clarity, or the dehaze filters in Adobe Camera Raw. We're just gonna kind of open up and get our image in a better spot as far as color and as far as tonal range. And then we're gonna send it over to Photoshop we're gonna do some selective toning, and then in the end, we can always come back to this and give some clarity or texture and make our images pop at the end. So these are usually sharpness, clarity, all that stuff is stuff that you wanna do at the end of toning, not the beginning. And in a lot of cases, what people don't realize is, not only do you wanna do this at the end, you wanna do it after you have sized your image. Basically, you wanna size your image and get it the size that you are going to output it, whether for print or the internet or whatever, and then add that clarity because your size is gonna make a difference on how you sharpen and add clarity to your image. The last thing that we have down here is vibrance and saturation, so you can super saturate or desaturate. Now, this is not the way to turn something black and white just by desaturating. So those are your basic adjustments inside Adobe Camera Raw. Now there's a whole bunch of other stuff and we can do selective adjustments. We are gonna come back and get to those in another time. Next thing you're gonna do is go ahead and hit open image and bam, just like that, that image has been opened up inside of Adobe Photoshop and we are ready to start toning inside of Adobe Photoshop. Hopefully that has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.